Good afternoon and welcome to our white coat ceremony. Uh, this is both a joyous and a solemn occasion and I'm going to start off with a joyous note. How many people here, not in the middle row, but in the other rows, think they are the proudest people in the whole room today? Hold up your hand. Okay, we have a tie, so uh, we will proceed. I just want to tell you folks, I want to tell you folks how proud we are of these folks. Uh, the development we've seen academically and professionally has just been really gratifying this year. So we look forward to this very important ceremony, which uh, takes uh, an important step because to this point, much of your activity uh, has been academic and you have all performed very well academically. But today you really take on a different kind of responsibility. And I, I think there, there are several kinds of responsibilities that you're taking starting today. One is the responsibility for the patients themselves. These people have put themselves in your care for their total health. And it was actually Will Mayo who said that a good dentition adds 10 years to somebody's life. And as the information piles up that oral health and total health are all tied together, uh, that is something that you are now assuming the responsibility for. Um, I think part of the responsibility is keeping your skills up every day, day after day, and, and listening to your patients now to provide care that are appropriate for that person. Uh, we also think you assume a responsibility to reach out for those who are less fortunate. Uh, we are a profession. We do take care of patients, but we are also here to try to take care of our society. And one thing that will happen for sure, you will assume a new level of visibility you have not yet seen. You're only that far away from a person that's watching everything you do uh, and every move you make, and their full attention is on you. They're not thinking about their grocery visit. They're not thinking about the football game. They're thinking about what you have in mind for them. So uh, part of this I uh, want to pick up on is the patient side of this, because you're now, uh, you have been, but you, I think, get a better sense of how you're part of this now academic health center, the entire academic health center looking for the total health. Now many people that you're going to see now, Iowa has a thousand towns roughly. The hospital across the way between eight and five Monday through Friday is something like the 15th largest city in Iowa. Okay, so a lot of these people are coming from towns that this is bigger than where they live. And they're, they're going to be sometimes a little overwhelmed with that. So it's up to us to make sure that these people, have, we make every effort we can to get them where they want to go. If you see somebody that looks confused, you know, make sure we try to help them out in addition to pro providing the care. Uh, also, I need to, need to advise you that many people who come from all over Iowa look at this as their university, and this is their uh, academic health center, and these are their Hawkeyes. So, uh, just, just a reminder that, that we're sharing this uh, with them. Uh, the one thing I would say with patients is just communicate as you would with, with a loved one. There are places to do this, and you'll hear more about that in a few minutes here, but uh, there, are, there are places where you do need to share. Nobody knows all the answers. It is important uh, for, for you to share that in a way, but that, that we're very careful not to cross the line and ever, ever have patients become part of our local gossip. Um, so I'm, I'm going to wind up my things uh, with, uh, with some ideas from uh, David Hume, who is a 17th century Scottish philosopher, and he said that reasoning does not cause people to act in certain ways. Moral judgments cause people to act in certain ways. So we are into evidence, we're into reasoning, we're into thinking, uh, we're into to repetition, but it will often be your final moral judgment that will decide what you actually do between you and, and your patient. Um, these are habits you'll have the rest of, rest of your life. So I would welcome you. I think this is going to be a gratifying, challenging, and really exciting time. So welcome to a new part of your profession. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Pete Damiano. I direct the University of Iowa Pol Public Policy Center, and I'm also a faculty member here in the College of Dentistry. 
And this whole white coat ceremony came out of an emphasis from the American College of Dentists on professionalism. And you'll be hearing some more about some of the groups that have been sponsoring that are really important. But this is one of those things that both at a personal level and as Dr. Johnson mentioned, sort of a community level, there really is sort of a change that's occurring here that's, that is very exciting and really important. Um, some of you had a really good idea of what it meant to be a dentist when you started dental school. Some of you maybe not so much. I remember sitting out here in the link a couple of years ago and uh, when I was finishing up sophomore year in dental school and had the dad of a friend of mine came up who was a dentist in Dubuque and he said, if you knew what you knew now, would you still go back to dental school? And we all kind of looked at each other and kind of like, mm, I don't know. You know he, really, the point was, we didn't really know what we were getting into. And he said, yeah, I guess things haven't changed since the 15 or 20 years that he has been there. So look into you. No, I won't even ask that question. Out. Don't, we, we don't want to know that at this point. But there are a lot of things that you're going to be encountering that you may not have expected about what it meant to be a dentist. Some of those things are going to be, again, with the individual patients. Some of those are going to be kind of more community-oriented kinds of stuff. But this is a point where I really think the fun begins. Not that ba basic chemistry you know, and the biochemistry and the anatomy and all that kind of stuff isn't fun. Of course it is. But now you're actually working with people. And you're starting to do the stuff with your hands, that the things that you really thought about when I wanted to be a dentist and what does it mean. And, you know, everybody, well, why do you want to be a dentist, right? Well, it's because I want to use my hands, I want to help people, and I want to be my own boss, right? Those are sort of, that's still kind of the same things you were thinking about, yeah. It's like, again, you learn there's a lot more to it, but that kind of stuff is still similar. But from first at a policy level perspective, there's a professionalism that starts entering in that maybe you would never have thought about. There's a lot of people out there that need care and aren't able to get it, either because of physical challenges, mental disabilities, access to care issues. It could be language, cultural financing. We're entering a lot of changes going on in the healthcare delivery system, um, some related to the Affordable Care Act, some things that were just changing. We had 50 million people without health insurance coming into this year. We spent $3 trillion on health care in the United States, and we've got a lot of people that are, they, we've got a lot of challenges in coordinating care and quality of care kinds of issues that are just causing changes. And you all are involved in some interprofessional education. That's one of the buzzwords that you hear a lot. And so that's, well, how do we train dentists and dental students with physicians, with nurses, with pharmacists, because you're going to be going out into an environment where that's going to be becoming more and more important. There's a lot of discussion about healthcare integration. How do we work together? How do we develop health homes? And that comes out of the fact that we spend, that out of that $3 trillion, 1% of the population actually spends about 27% of all the health care costs. 10% of the population, we spend about 69% of all of our health care costs. So we've got a lot of really sick, chronically ill folks with diseases that are going to be best managed by team approaches to these things. And dentists, and with all of your training, along with pharmacists and others working together, is how we're going to be able to manage that the best way. So that's going to be a professional level. That's going to be a change for our profession out there in the community as well. These aren't things that we haven't often thought about. We haven't thought about how to care for populations in the same way that we've always thought about just treating individuals. But that's something that's just going to have to change, and we have to learn how to be a part of that in a, in a real positive way. Then at the individual level, there's this sort of, I think, often in dentistry where we don't think we're quite as important as our medical colleagues, because we don't deal with life and death all the time, right? Well, does that mean that the professionalism isn't as important? Of course not. But take a step back and think about what you're dealing with all the time, whether it's caries or periodontal disease. These are chronic health conditions that are not self-limiting, that are going to continue to get worse if we do not intervene as health professionals. And so that brings some responsibility for us to take care of populations that need our assistance. Not to put down our primary care colleagues in any way, but you think about what a primary care physician does on a day-to-day -day basis. They're not, every visit is not about saving somebody's life, right? It's about dealing with a lot of people with chronic illnesses, whether it's diabetes or hypertension, trying to improve their quality of life, and it's exactly what you're going to be doing when you enter into practice. I practiced in our special care clinic for many years, and now in our faculty group practice, and see a lot of people with chronic health conditions, mental health problems, things like that. And that also brings back that whole importance of how important oral health is to people. You start getting into, well, it's, you know, it's just a tooth, just putting in a filling, and then you run into somebody who's got some sort of you have cancer, for example, or somebody who is, has some sort of schizophrenic or something like that. Marsh and I just the other day had a, shared a patient who was a schizophrenic. We were literally now the only people in the building 
who are able to see this person because we built this level of trust. And when he has gone to some other person, there's now a note saying no one else can see him because he's, that's something that's very special, takes years to actually develop, and it's really important. And the minute you think, well, it's just a tooth, then you run into one of these people who you'd think they have got bigger challenges in their life than something like this, but that's really important to them. That if they lose a tooth or they start having some sort of a decline in their own health, even if they're dealing with something more important, it becomes really important to them and it reinforces that, yes, we really are important. We're really important to the person's health status and really important as a part of the healthcare team. And that's where, you, you know, again, you have it both at sort of that professional societal level and then bringing it down to both that individual patient level. So that's really what this is all about. This is, again, the part of the fun note. That's the thing that also remember. You're now dealing with people. You're going to be dealing with patients that have driven four or five hours sometimes to come and see you, and they will keep coming back. And it's just amazing what some of these patients will do as they're also trying to help you because you're going to build a relationship, especially your senior year when you see people back multiple times, and it really is something special so that when you go out into practice, you're going to be able to experience that and really know that what you're doing is something useful and something good. So have fun, enjoy it, embrace the professionalism, embrace being a doctor, reaching out to those people that don't have access to care, those people that do need your assistance and do need your professionalism, and I think you're going to have a really great career. So thank you very much. My name is uh, Mike Canellis. I'm a pediatric dentist and I'm associate dean for patient care. I don't get to give a talk tonight. Um, if you want to hear me talk, you have to come to the talent show. I get to MC that on Tuesday night <laughs> with Karen Baker. It's awesome. And thanks to the freshmen for stepping up to the plate. I know a lot of you guys are involved. But tonight what I have the privilege of doing is introducing uh, spokespersons uh, from the organizations that made this event possible. Um, and I'm going to ask, I'll introduce all of them right now, and then they will come up and, and tell about their organization and a few comments, um, just one right after another, so I won't have to introduce people individually one at a time. First, we will hear from Dr. Axel Ruprecht, representing the International College of Dentists. Following Axel, we'll hear from Dr. Kathy Kell from the great, great class of 1979. She's representing the American College of Dentists. After that, Dr. Fred Burnham will talk for Pierre Fouchard, and finally, Ms. Penny Ryan for OKU. So Axel, do you want to come on up? Thank you. Those of you in the middle, I assume, know who I am. If not, we'll be checking the attendance later. Um, I'm Axel Ruprecht, and I'm the director of oral and maxillofacial radiology here. Uh, usually, I don't walk in having notes in my hand as the students will attest, but since I'm representing the International College, you have to make sure you kind of stay on the party line, so I'm going to be reading part of this. On behalf of the International College of Dentists, I want to congratulate you and welcome you into the world of clinical dentistry. You have proven yourselves in the preclinical courses and now start a lifelong adventure treating living, breathing patients. And it would be nice to keep them that way. <laughs> I'm sure you will hear this often, but patient treatment carries with it great responsibility. First, you are responsible to your patients to treat them the best way and with the best care you can offer. There's no room up here. <laughs> You're responsible to the faculty and the staff of the college to follow procedures and protocols intended to make the patients, to better the patients and make their treatment as efficient and effective as possible. You are responsible to the profession to uphold the standards of those who have gone before you and to be an example to those who will follow you in the profession. You are responsible to society to uphold standards and morals of honest and ethical treatment of all individuals, regardless of their backgrounds, differences, and diversities. And last, but by no means least, you are absolutely responsible to yourself. To always strive to do your best, 
take no shortcuts, and be open and honest in all of your decision making, treatment delivery, and outcome assessment. To yourself, be true and honest, and it will then be natural and instinctive to be true and honest to your patients. Or, as Shakespeare's Polonius said in Hamlet, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man. We all have times when things don't go just as we planned or hoped. Be honest and forthright with your patients. Tell them openly, and they will usually understand. If you are a caring and concerned dental student and dentist, your patients will become your biggest and most vocal advocates. But if you compromise your own standards, cover up things, deceive them or attempt to mislead them, they will become your most vocal and adamant adversaries. The International College of Dentists is here to help you on your journey. It is dedicated to recognizing outstanding professional achievement and meritorious service, and to the continued progress of dentistry for all of humankind. The International College has five core goals to help guide and direct you. The first is leadership, to uphold the highest standard of professional competence and personal ethics. The second is recognition, to recognize distinguished service to the profession and public. Third is humanitarianism, to promote prevention and treatment of oral disease in underserved populations by supporting and encouraging humanitarian projects. The fourth is education, to advance the profession through growth and diffusion of dental knowledge worldwide. The fifth is professional relations, to provide a forum for relations and communications within the profession and to preserve the highest perception of the profession. Along with sponsoring the White Coat Ceremony, the International College supports the foreign exchange programs for dental students in Iowa, supporting students to Denmark, London, Nijmegen, or India. The International College also recognizes senior students for leadership with the Student Leadership Award. This award is in recognition of meritorious service and significant contributions to our profession. It honors a graduate who has demonstrated conspicuous professional growth during his or her student years, a person who shows high potential for continued professional activity and contributions. This past year, the award was presented to Mr. and now Dr. John Serbu. I again want to welcome you and let you know the International College of Dentists is here to encourage and support you in your adventures into clinical dentistry. Kathy Kell, and I'm the chair of the Iowa section of the American College of Dentists, one of the sponsors of the White Coat Ceremony. I'm also an Iowa graduate and have a private practice in general dentistry in Davenport, Iowa. The American College of Dentists is an honorary professional organization committed to promoting ethics, professional responsibility, and ethical decision making. And the white coat that you will get here today is symbolic of our profession. It signifies your transition into patient care and clinical practice, and it shows that you're on the way to becoming a professional. So what does becoming a professional mean to you? As you move into the clinical care department, you'll now be responsible to serve the best interests of your patients, and you must consider their interests before your own. You must care for them to the best of your ability, and how good you become in developing your care skill and judgment will depend on you. The American College has provided each of you with an ethics handbook in dentists and the card with the ACD test for ethical decisions. These are excellent guides for you, and read them and use them in your clinical work. The ACD handbook guides three areas, including assessment, what is true, what is accurate, fair, good quality, and legal. Communication. Have you listened to your patients and your instructors? Have you informed patients and explained what you're doing? and have you presented some of the alternatives? And then decision making. Do you have the time for appropriate care or does the treatment need to be phased and sequenced? And is it in your ability to do 
and need, or do you need any more help from your instructor sometimes, or from specialists? Sometimes it's best to refer to. And above all, do no harm and know your limits. And sometimes just the best test is, what would you want for yourself and for your family? And these questions help you make some good decisions. And just remember, too, most people really aren't that excited about going to the dentist. Most of them would like to avoid us. But your patients really don't care sometimes how much you know until you show them how much you care about them. When you show that you care, then you'll gain their trust, respect, and their loyalty. So becoming a professional certainly is a lifelong process. And in closing, I encourage you to strive to do the best that you can, realizing that you have a lot to learn and an opportunity now to bounce questions off your instructors and each other, and an opportunity that you won't always have when you're alone out in private practice. And by the way, this really is the best dental college in the country, so you're going to learn a lot here. <laughs> so I encourage your classmates in college to do their best so dentistry will continue to be one of the most trusted and respected professions as it is. And don't forget to get involved in your professional organizations, too. They, you'll really get a lot more out of them than uh, you, when you get involved. And always serve your patients to the best of your ability. Appreciate the people that are there to support you on this journey for life. So thank you all to the family and friends that are here today that are coming to celebrate with you. And congratulations on receiving your white coat. And welcome to clinical practice. Thank you. I've been here, and it's kind of nice to look around and see a lot of proud parents and grandparents and tolerant siblings and all that. Um, my name is Fred Burnham. I'm in general dentist. I've been in practice in Bentendorf, Iowa for the last 37 years, worked in a variety of capacities within uh, organized dentistry, and I uh, also have at one point served as an adjunct professor in family dentistry, and I did that for several years. And I have noticed at least one set of parents that I had as a student, so that puts me back there a ways. Uh, I'm here today representing the Pierre Fouchard Academy. Pierre, the Pierre Fouchard Academy is an international honorary dental service organization. It is named for Pierre Fouchard, a Frenchman credited with writing the first text, true textbook of dentistry, which was published in 1728. The Academy is founded in ethics and dentistry and contributions to the art and science of dentistry and to society. It's a great honor for me to be here today as part of your white coat ceremony. This ceremony celebrates your transition from didactic learning to clinical learning. When I started dental school, I didn't have a clue what I was getting into. Uh, my only experiences were as a patient. Uh, I found that the pace of learning was way faster and more concentrated than anything I'd had in undergraduate school. Lab work, I had no idea what a crown was, let alone how to wax a crown. And in preventive dentistry, and you've done a lot of waxing, I'm sure, and possibly setting denture teeth, Preventive dentistry taught me how to brush and floss. Uh, today, when you put on your white coat, you will be challenged with the task of applying all the information and new set of skills you've learned into treatment for a real person. The treatment will, will be, you will be providing for your patients is often very difficult and will require the application of the knowledge and skills which you have learned and will continue to learn over the next three years in dental school and on, in your continuing dentistry. As an adjunct professor in family dentistry, I found that I always learned more than I ever taught. It was fun and sometimes challenging. I dealt with a lot of students that were a lot brighter than me, for one thing, and uh, some very talented students. And it was fun to watch them transition and learn as the year went on and become real people, real dentists. The best of these students tended to have three traits in common. They were very organized. When they showed up for treatment on a daily basis, they were always totally prepared, and it makes a world of difference. They were very curious. They were curious to learn more. And it is hard to learn anything without some curiosity and willingness to ask questions. And these themes come up all the time. They were compassionate and caring. They cared about their patients' well-being. You need to realize that these patients won't sit in your dental chair if you don't have some level of faith and trust in you. And you have to treat them with respect and kind kindness to earn this respect and keep this trust. Treat them just as you would like to be treated yourself. Three traits, organized, curious, and compassionate, can help you to succeed in whatever field of dentistry you choose. It will shape your life also for the rest of your life in dentistry, 
and keep you on, pointed in the correct direction and getting the right things done for everybody. One of my favorite college professors always had a phrase that he often used, and it was one called, the journey is the destination. To continue on and graduate from dental school does not bring you to the destination. Rather, the journey goes on throughout your career in dentistry. You've been provided with a broad, solid base of skills, and now it is up to you to apply these skills and continue on with your journey into dentistry. Best of luck with the rest of your dental school education, and have a lot of fun with your family. Thank you. I'm Penny Ryan. I'm Director of Alumni Relations and Continuing Education here at the college, and I'm also past president of the new chapter of Omicron, Omicron Kappa Upsilon. OKU was to have as a standard for its membership certain ideas which are found in the preamble of its first constitution. To read, it says, to encourage and develop a spirit of emulation among students in dentistry and to recognize in an appropriate manner those who shall distinguish themselves by a high grade of scholarship. I'd briefly like to impress upon you that what we expect of you are more than just the minimum standards. The values that we stand for remind us of what it takes to complete training and accomplish our goals. They inspire us to do our very best at all times. Integrity is the willingness to do what is right even when no one is looking over your shoulder. Do your very best at all times. Service, this is the norm. But remember to act in the certain knowledge that all persons possess fundamental worth as human beings. Excellence. As dental professionals, you are expected to develop and sustain a passion for continuous improvement and lifelong learning. Members inducted into OKU are scholastic standouts with unblemished moral and ethical character. The University of Iowa established its component chapter, the new chapter, in 1923, with a long, rich heritage. From myself personally and from all members of OKU, congratulations on receiving your clinical privileges and your white coat. You all should be very proud. I'm Marcia Cunningham, and I'm faculty in the College of Dentistry in the Department of Preventive and Community Dentistry. It happens to be my honor to be the course director um, where we first go into our first clinical setting. And so we do lots of preclinical things, but you might have heard some stories that they're seeing each other as patients since January. Um, and so we've kind of um, done all that we can do with each other as patients. Now we need some other patients to work with. And so I understand some of you are some volunteers for us in May and June as to be patients, and we appreciate that a lot. Um, I hope they told you you'd be here all afternoon when you're the patient in that clinic. Um, and I just want to reassure you that, in fact, they will get faster, and they can make a living at this. <laughs> um, so um, my job is to ask, request permission of Dean Johnson, Dr. Canellis, and Dr. Elvers, who I've lost. Dr. Elvers. Um, that this class be granted clinical privileges such that they can see patients belonging to the College of Dentistry. They have worked hard to get to this point, and that is my request. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so now the teacher in me tells you, here's how this is going to go. You come, down, you come down this aisle on this side after I call names, and I need to do this in alpha order so that we get the right coat on the right person. <laughs> Um, you will stop first. Dr. Elvers will uh, place your coat on you, and then you will come to Dr. Canellis, and he will give you um, your packet, which has the oath of the dentist uh, in, in that packet, and shake hands with each of those people and Dean Johnson. Questions? Okay. Ready? We're going to start with Chip Abraham. We can clap.
Great job. <laughs> Stephen Adeoti. Ellen Babor. Brant Bergman. Lucas Borg. Bren, Bren Boswell. Patrick Brambear. Patrick Clancy. Walker Clark. Kara Clement. Lucas Connor. Gregory Daniels. Erica Deemer. (laughs) 
Jessica Estucia Ponce de Leon. Emily Flessner. <laughs> Michaela Forward. Derek Furrow. <laughs> Jeanette Garcia. John Garducci. <laughs> Serena Geisinger. Taylor Geyer. <laughs> Casey Getz. Marissa Gregg. <laughs> Catherine Hankey. Bond Harmon.
Sean Harvey. Michael Hemming. Morgan Hess. Joshua Hindman. Christopher Hugden. <laughs> Leah Holloway. Aaron Johnson. Aaron Jones. Brian Jones. Mary Kaufman. David Knight. Amy Kobliska. Patrick Colker. <laughs> Brian Hess. 
Brianna Lange. Mary Lima. Zachary Lenquist. John Lawrence. Peter Marshall. Sean McGivern. <laughs> Josephine Meese. Caitlin Miller. <laughs> Isabella Newcomer. Anna Oculist. Sean O'Neill. So Young Park. Connor Pinino.
Alex Fan. Erica Raker. <laughs> Haley Reinhardt. Sophia Ringsdorf. <laughs> Melanie Roth. Sarah Ryan. <laughs> Blake Shaney. Terry Schmidt. <laughs> Timothy Schramm. Molly Shellquist. <laughs> Holly Steger. Austin Style. <laughs> Emily Style.
Cleo Stephanidis. Allison Superwitz. <laughs> Jonathan Shevchik. Amy Tarr. <laughs> Daniel Thrall. Christopher Trinan. Tony Trujillo. Austin Tiskland. <laughs> Amy Vermeer. Alex Witzthum. Tyler Wallingford. Allison Wade. <laughs> Thomas Welk.
Harris Williams. Melanie Womechka. <laughs> Are there any white coats left? Perfect. Would the class plates stand? So we're going to need to open your oath there, and Dr. Elvers is going to lead you as you recite the oath of a dentist. As a member... Go, as a member, the dental profession shall keep this pledge and these stipulations. I understand and accept that my primary responsibility is to my patients, and I shall dedicate myself to render, to the best of my ability, the highest standard of oral health care and to maintain a relationship of respect and confidence. Therefore, let all come to me safe in the knowledge that their total health and well-being are my first considerations. I shall accept the responsibility that as a professional, my confidence rests as continuing the attainment of knowledge and skill in the arts and science of dentistry. I acknowledge my obligation to support and sustain the honor and integrity of the profession and to conduct myself in all endeavors such that I shall merit the respect of patients, colleagues, and my community. I further commit myself to the betterment of my community for the benefit of all of society. I shall faithfully observe the principles of ethics and code of professional conduct set forth by the profession. All this I pledge with my, pride, my commitment to the profession and the public it serves. Very good. Congratulations. We're going to ask the class to go out each of these doors to get a group picture outside. The weather is cooperating with us. So we're going to get a group picture on the stairs. We're going to let the students go first, if you wouldn't mind, so we can get them out onto the stairs. We can go now. And then as soon as we um, get them out there, then the rest of us can join them and get some pictures. And refreshments are in the cafeteria down in this direction to my left. Okay, let's please go to the link and on to receptions. Thank you for coming.